Gandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maravik Mabanag, Executive Director of High Ridge House, your sanctuary for healing and renewal. Welcome to our 2017 annual meeting, Nursing Ourselves, Nursing Our Churches. Let me start with a little story. In the Christian Science Sentinel of February 22, 1941, an item appears from Lausanne, Switzerland, which tells of a church to which, as the bell tolled for evening service, came worshipers from many byways, each bearing a little bronze lamp of very old design. When asked by a traveler why this was done, the reply was, we have no other way of lighting our church. In the year 1550, when it was built, the seigneur of the village decided that each should carry his lamp. The lamps belong to the church, which lends them to the people. We light them at a torch as we enter. Each one comes to make it more bright, for he knows if he stays at home, the church will be the darker for it and the service more somber. Each dark spot speaks of one absent. Thank you for coming and bringing your lamp today to light up High Ridge House. It is my hope that you will go home with the oil of your lamp replenished, that you will feel comforted, nursed, and inspired. At last year's annual meeting, we talked about a renewed vision for High Ridge House. I called upon spiritual thinkers like you to bring forth fresh evidence of the healing power of God for High Ridge House. Let me share some wonderful blessings and fruits from our individual and collective prayers and actions. Soon after annual meeting, someone who attended felt an impulse to contribute towards this renewed vision. Debbie Ross, an interior decorator from Midland Park Church, spent the past year helping us convert rooms to new and beautiful spaces. As she said, and I quote, I wanted to bring a sense of freshness and newness to High Ridge House. She redecorated each of our common rooms and refurbished each of the rooms for our Christian science nurses by buying new beds, furnishings, and beddings. She even hand upholstered two headboards by herself. What a selfless and generous act, all a gift to High Ridge House. That is true nursing. Last year as well, we shared with you the financial challenge we faced when Medicare withheld $800,000 from High Ridge House. Many of you thanked us for our honesty and transparency, and you went back to your churches and advocated for High Ridge House to receive additional gifts and contributions from your members. And so many of you reached deep into your pockets and made that stretch donation that we know not only blessed us, but had to bless you as well. Remember the passage in the Bible, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten? Our previous 1.5 million cash reserves which were nearly depleted over the past three years, have begun to be restored. I am happy to report that now the tide has turned in 2017 as generous donations have resulted in a year-to-date additional $556,000. For our facility to function 365 days a week, 
at the level of quality that Christian science requires of us, the cost incurred is approximately $200,000 a month. This does not include any capital improvements we still have to make. Because of the field's valuing of the Christian science nursing care we provide, we are blessed daily by your generous continued contributions. And we so value your partnership with us in this healing ministry. Another new unfoldment is our startup day program where we bring individuals from Manhattan for a day of spiritual study, lunch, and a testimony meeting. It is a blessing for those who otherwise cannot go out on their own and is providing needed companionship and disciplined study. And thank you, you'll meet some of them today. And we even send them home with soup and a sandwich, taken care of by a food service. Each day, we are learning that High Ridge House is living proof that God's promises are perpetual and ever at hand to bring a renewal of health, holiness, and harmony for organizations and individuals. To nurse means to cherish, to treat with tenderness and affection. Thank you for keeping High Ridge House in your thought, in your prayers, and most especially with your love. The time for nursing and revitalizing our churches is now. As Julia Johnston has said, it is the hour when problems give place to progress when the spirit of Christian science soars and sings, it is the time when fetters fall and mounting sense beholds new peaks of revelation and demonstration. No greater privilege could be ours than to be God's own agency through which will be revealed the visible evidence of the structure of truth and love. This is our holy calling. And we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Let us light our lamps. And now, may I introduce the President of the Board of Trustees of High Ridge House, Fran Hall. Good afternoon to all of you. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we're just so happy to see you here this afternoon. In an address before the Christian Scientist Association of the Massachusetts Metaphysical College in 1893, Mrs. Eddy had this to say about obedience. Never absent from your post, never off guard, never ill-humored, never unready to work for God is obedience, being faithful over a few things. <clears throat> I can't think of any words that more accurately describe two people, Vicki Bredeman and Beth Sidness. Both were members of the High Ridge House Board of Trustees, Vicki for almost nine and a half years, and Beth for seven. High Ridge House has benefited greatly from the devotion of these two servants of the Lord, and we would like to give them these gifts in recognition of all they have done for High Ridge House and Christian Science Nursing. And folks, that's between the two of them, 18 years serving on the High Ridge Board. And that truly is, is devotion. 
In the book of Ezekiel, we read, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. It's an intriguing statement, and it applies aptly to our past year at High Ridge House. I think it doesn't refer to people, but instead to concepts, to the dawning of a greater understanding of the Christ truth. This naturally has a transformative effect, and it brings changes that better enable us to fulfill our mission. This past year, we have seen changes in our staff, in our financial situation, and on our board. Let me address these areas in reverse order. We said a reluctant farewell to our longtime board member, Vicki Bredeman, who's right over there. Her previous career as an attorney served us well as we faced various challenges over the years. At the same time, we had the delightful opportunity to welcome Thorin Washington as our most recent board member. Thorin likes to say he was introduced to Christian science by his parents. He was raised in Christian science and attended the Christian Science Sunday School in Brooklyn. Today, Thorin enjoys work as a computer technician, security consultant, and is a property management business owner. He is a class taught Christian scientist, is second reader at his church in Kingston, New York, and serves on several church committees. He is a wonderful addition to our board. Thorin, I'd like to invite you to please stand. And I would like to introduce the other bo wonderful board members that are here with us today and have them stand as well. Marilyn Bradshaw and Barbara Burley. <laughs> Barbara here. <laughs> Candace Cunaberti, also on the board, is traveling, so could not be with us here today. There is for all of us at one time or another the question of demonstrating the true nature of substance and supply. While High Ridge House continues to face unresolved questions with Medicare, and yes, they are still withholding funds from us, we have had the most touching support from the field. Sometimes it comes in the form of a letter that expresses encouragement and appreciation. Sometimes dedicated donors have come forward, individuals and foundations, Matching fund grants and bequests are helping us weather this storm. We are deeply grateful for every gift, small or large. We have prepared a sheet that contains details of our financial picture, and if anyone would like to review it with us, we would be happy to meet with you today after the program. Mary Baker Eddy asks, when will mankind awake to know their present ownership of all good? This important question is ours to answer. As Marvick has said, we still rely on donations from the field to meet roughly half of our operating budget of more than $2.4 million. But our financial picture this year, as she also said, has improved. And we are just so grateful for the support that all of you have given us, and so grateful that we can stand here today and say that. While we may not be completely out of the woods yet, the words of the psalmist assure us that all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. <laughs> Our victory is assured as God's angels lead us forward. We have also had changes in our nursing staff. Some nurses have left, new nurses have come. One of the recent additions is our new director of Christian Science Nursing, Cassia Shook. Cassia and her husband Jay and their family moved here from Boston, where both Cassia and Jay served at the Chestnut Hill Benevolent Association. Cassia most recently, as an assistant director of Christian Science Nursing. These changes in the past year 
bring opportunities for new and fresh ideas, ideas that strengthen our healing mission and initiate better practices to sustain it. This is part of the overturning and it is an expression of our spiritual growth. New occasions teach new duties are familiar words from him 258. And that is true for all of us. While it always seems the challenges that arise are out there, the members of the High Ridge House Board remind each other that it is really an inside job. Our success, our progress, finds its firm foundation in our individual and collective spiritual growth. Our growth in grace, in trust in God, growth in spiritual understanding and discernment. And this growth is not just about High Ridge House. It is about the progress of the cause of Christian science. That is why our theme here today is nursing ourselves, nursing our churches. As our leader says it so elegantly and with such tender affection for us, her followers, where heart meets heart, reciprocally blessed. Drink with me the living waters of the spirit of my life purpose to impress humanity with the genuine recognition of practical, operative Christian science. Isn't that what we are all about? Isn't that what we all want to do? And now I'd like to introduce our Director of Christian Science Nursing, Cassia Shook. Hello. I'm so grateful to be here for my first annual meeting at High Ridge House. I'd like to give you all just a little bit of background on myself. After college, I worked in a business of a, the business office of a growing company, of which I eventually became vice president. After marrying and starting a family, I received the call to become a Christian science nurse. I'm sorry to say I was not very enthusiastic about that call. <laughs> but wanting to be obedient, however, I timidly began my nursing career. When my husband joined the ranks of Christian Science Nurses, we raised our six children working opposite shifts. How did we do it? By the grace of God. <laughs> as Fran said, prior to High Ridge House, I served as Assistant Director of Christian Science Nursing at the Chestnut Hill Benevolent Association. As we got to know High Ridge House, we were attracted to the need to nurse this facility and make a contribution. We were grateful to see the humility and willingness to grow, the demonstrations that were being made, and the desire to go up higher. We are very grateful to be here at this time in its growth. The number one priority at High Ridge House is healing. Let me read to you a testimony of healing from a patient that we cared for. I had been working through a belief of internal pain for over two weeks when I called High Ridge House. I was driven down and immediately admitted. The care and the staff was amazing. I felt both embraced with love as well as the palpable strength of conviction by all the staff. They read hymns to me, passages in the Bible and science and health. I spent a few nights up in pain and a few days in bed. But as I felt mentally stronger in my understanding of God, I was able to start to take in drink and eventually food. I gained the strength to sit upright and to walk on my own to the study room. Although the healing from start to finish took a month in which I have been out of work, I've been so grateful for the opportunity to visit my relationship to God and to expand my understanding of science. Many fears of the future and relationship troubles have been put to rest. Thank you so much for everything and everyone. 
I couldn't have been in a more amazing place with more loving and wonderful people. Let's remember also that High Ridge House is not just here for the care of physical needs. We care for our fellow man in other ways as well. For instance, there was a patient who came to us for spiritual refreshment and growth. She was exhausted from caring for her father and taking care of other issues in a family in which she was the only Christian scientist. She didn't need any practical nursing care, but she was calling on the bylaw of the Christian science nurse to be an active witness to the truth. She stayed in one of our rest and study rooms, but the Christian science nurses on the nursing floor lovingly checked on her frequently while she was here. Within two days, she was a different person. Her gratitude for this refuge was unbounded. The loving atmosphere buoyed her and gave her the spiritual refreshment she needed. She left healed and energized. Let us feel the divine energy of spirit, bringing us into newness of life, says Mary Baker Eddy. This is our current daily theme at High Ridge House. Another priority right now is recruiting more Christian science nurses. Our strategy is praying to attract the right thought, those that are striving for healing, the people that can bless us as we can bless them. Our prayers are being answered. We are now expectant of more abundance. Our goal is to be metaphysically prepared, adequately staffed, and properly trained to receive whatever the needs are in our community. We are also seeing progress with our current nursing staff. We are feeling a more uplifted and lighter sense on the nursing floor. At this time, I would like to have the High Ridge House Christian Science nurses stand and be recognized. We're thankful to all of them. Our rest and study program is flourishing. One guest reported that he and his family felt so much love when they came to stay with us. We have recently been receiving calls from non-Christian scientists asking for their loved ones to come here to have Christian science care. There has been some renewed interest from former employees the patients are having progress in all sorts of ways, and working relationships and supply are being met in new ideas that could only come from the divine mind. We are so grateful for every one of these signs of God's loving presence here at High Ridge House. But we can't do any of this without you. This is a healing ministry for us all. Mrs. Eddy made sure that this bylaw for the Christian Science Nurse was a part of church. And as members of this church, we are all responsible for expressing the qualities of the Christian Science Nurse and fulfilling the bylaw in each of our individual ways. We don't all need to advertise in the journal as Christian Science Nurses, but we are all called on to be healers and at times to demonstrate that practical wisdom to help our fellow man. This is a healing ministry for us all. We ask you to come visit us, support us, volunteer with us, and pray for us to fulfill our mission. We are all called to this good work. We are all needed in this good work. We are all sponsors in this good work. Mrs. Eddy says in miscellany, you are the needed and the inevitable sponsors for the 20th century, reaching deep down into the universal and rising above theorems into the transcendental, the infinite, yea, to the reality of God, man, nature, the universe. High Ridge House needs you in this century, our church, our community and our world needs you. Thank you all so much for being here today and for your loving support.
Thank you. I would now like to introduce our visiting Christian Science nurse, Joe Dickinson. How do we know when angels are visiting us? Do you know that they are visiting you right now? Mary Baker Eddy says, when angels visit us, we do not hear the rustle of wings, nor feel the feathery touch of the breast of a dove, but we know their presence by the love they create in our hearts. Did you hear that? We know their presence by the love they create in our hearts. God's angels are creating love in our hearts, in your heart, right here, right now. Mrs. Eddy continues, oh, may you feel this touch. It is not the clasping of hands nor a loved person present. It is more than this. It is a spiritual idea that lights your path. God's angels have definitely been lighting my path. It has been an honor to serve as the Christian Science Visiting Nurse for High Ridge House because I get to witness these angels creating love in your hearts, in my heart, even when I am not physically present with you. When someone calls High Ridge House for a Christian Science Nurse to come and visit, it might seem like they are asking for a person to be present with them either immediately or eventually. Often they are, and of course, I am more than happy to go. But I believe that the call behind the call is for us to immediately witness together the angels of God's love that are already there and making themselves known. So whether I go to someone's house or not, whether I visit you in a hospital or share ideas with you in the car or on the phone, I know God's angels are already there loving you, healing you. One evening, I got a call from someone in the field who felt they really needed a Christian science nurse to come and stay overnight with them. They were experiencing a lot of fear and anxiety and were not interested in being alone. However, I was not available to go to their home, and after much searching, I discovered there were no other Christian Science nurses available either. Nevertheless, I was able to talk with this patient over the phone. I quietly asked God to show me how to love this dear one. His ideas came to me softly, one by one. I knew they were his angels by the love they were creating in my heart, and I shared these ideas with this sweet patient. I could tell God's angels were loving this woman, too, because the fear in her heart lessened and was replaced by the presence of God's love. It was not long before she said to me, Joe, I feel totally fine. I do not need you to come and be with me. I know God is right here. It was true. God's angels were right there, and we witnessed it together. She confirmed with me later that she had no return of that fear. At another time, I received another urgent call from a patient that told me her feet were in agony and she was unable to walk. Again, as I often do, I asked God to show me how to love this woman. The angel thought from science and health came swiftly. Matter is put under her feet, not on them or in them. I was led to read this to her and continued sharing spiritual ideas that were pouring forth from God's love. After about a half hour of sharing angel messages that were coming to me, she suddenly started shouting, Joe, I am walking, I am walking. I wasn't surprised. I knew God's angels were there with her. When I visited her the next day, 
She greeted me at the door with an angelic glow, open arms, and a big hug. There have been times when God's angels have guided us to visit fellow Christian scientists who find themselves in the hospital. One such visit, I was reading a Christian science testimony of healing to a church member. Her roommate, who was only separated by a curtain, had a family member visiting. After I was done with the testimony, the family member asked what I was reading. I told her it was a Christian science testimony. And she responded, well, every bit of it is true. Angels are everywhere. After that, she turned down the TV, and as I read the Bible lesson aloud, she quietly translated it to her mother. It was a holy moment. Angels are everywhere. If you or your loved one find yourselves faced with a choice to call 911 or High Ridge House, we know that God's angels will guide your care choices towards that which leaves you with love, not fear, in your heart. We would like to encourage you to give High Ridge House the opportunity to witness these healing angel thoughts together with us. And if you find yourself in a situation that does not align with the care you would have chosen, God will send his loving angels to visit you and lift you right out of the fear with grace. I am grateful for all the times God's angels have guided you to call on High Ridge House to witness this loving, healing presence with you. I am looking forward to the way his angels will continue to visit us and gently guide us together for many more. God's angels are visiting you right now. Their presence is creating love in your heart. They are lighting your path, and they are healing you right now. And now we'll hear a testimony from Iris Mazdama. Some years ago, while I was marking the Bible lesson in my apartment, a man who was contracted by the building came by. He asked me what I was doing and I began to share Christian science with him. That Wednesday, he came to Nine Church, and from that moment on, he embraced Christian science and became a devoted member. We became longtime friends. After many years, we had plans to get married last year. Soon after taking steps to finalize our plans, however, he suddenly died. As you can all imagine, I was in deep shock. I felt very depressed as all, all our plans were dashed. Frequently, I wondered my, why all this happened. After he passed, I sank into a deep depression. The sadness was at times overwhelming. In order to nurse myself and be nursed, I was sent to Highridge House. I worked consistently with the Bible lesson to understand and gain an acceptance of life as eternal. Now I am envisioning a new beginning through strength from God and the con continuity of good that I did not think was possible. After several days, Highridge House has shown me day by day the transition from grief to life and making all things new. It feels like I'm experiencing the new birth, as Mrs. Eddy has said. For some time, I felt all alone as I lost my best friend. God is always with us, are words frequently said to me by my fiance. I have now learned 
that God is my best, my ever friend, as the Christian Science Hymnal says. I have not lost a friend, but now my circle of friends is growing. Here at High Ridge House, one can experience all sorts of healings. For instance, one day I was suffering from terrible pain in my teeth. A staff member put me on FaceTime with the Christian Science practitioner. Immediately, the pain subsided, and within hours, I was healed, an instantaneous healing. At High Ridge House, I learned how to listen and what to listen for. I am able to become more aware of and hear God's angel messages. I find it very interesting that the address for High Ridge House is Independence Avenue. <laughs> Each day is a daily awakening and an independence from a sense of limitation and mortality. While at Harris House, I learned that indeed, my fiance's life never ended. I now see the light of immortality, that life goes on. At Highridge House, I learned that there is a fullness of life. This is a place to learn to live and to start over again. And for this, I am very grateful. Mary Baker Eddy once said, music is divine. She also wrote, I want not only quality, quantity and variation in tone, but the unction of love. And now may I present to you, Julia Wade. salvation of your being. When you pass through the waters, I am here. When you stand in the shadow, I will light your way And when you stumble and falter I will hold you in my arms In the face of misfortune You will know I'm near My presence will quiet your fear For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, the Comforter of your soul, and the Salvation of your being. When you pass through the water, God ever 
For the moment we've all been waiting for, our keynote speaker for today, Robert Bob Storm. Thank you, Marvec. It's good to be here. It's good to see you all, and a privilege. The theme of my talk this afternoon, nursing ourselves, nursing our churches. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a closer look at the term nursing. And at the conclusion, I'm hopeful we will have a fuller understanding of our God-given ability to put into practice what it means nursing ourselves, nursing our churches. According to Webster's Dictionary, a partial definition of the noun form of nurse reads, a person trained to take care of the sick and injured. The verb form of nurse reads, to take special care of, to nourish, foster, develop, or cherish. My family had an experience that really helped us appreciate a Christian science nurse, not only in terms of her practical care skills, but more importantly, Mildred's capacity, that's her name, to express the essence of nursing. The experience happened this way. One Saturday afternoon, I drove into our driveway with my son and daughter riding in the car. My wife, Linda, was working at a part-time job on that day. As I turned off the engine, my son asked if I would move the car forward a little bit so he, he'd have more room to play in the front yard. Instead of, turning the car, uh, instead of starting the car again, I simply released the emergency brake so the car would coast forward since we were on a slight incline. Well, my son, sitting in the back seat and a bit impatient, opened the right rear door and proceeded to stick his foot out so he could help push the car to make it move faster. <laughs> in the next instance, he was dragged out the door, screaming. I could not see what had happened from the, from the driver's side. So I stopped the car, ran around the right rear side, and was stunned to find that the right rear tire was on top of his ankle. I ran back to the driver's side, moved the car, and carefully picked him up and, and carried him inside uh, the house and laid him on a couch. I called a Christian science practitioner for Christian science treatment and I called a Christian science nurse to make a home visit for possible bandaging. The nurse arrived soon after my call. I could only describe the scene as a very gloomy mental atmosphere. Here was a very fearful and uncomfortable 10-year-old boy lying on the couch, 
a very upset sister and a dad struggling with self-condemnation. As our son Wyatt later recalled, as the nurse walked across the room, she was calm, confident. When she arrived at the couch and looked at him, hands on her hips, she said matter-of-factly, is that all it is? <laughs> as soon as Wyatt heard her words, he quickly concluded it was not as serious as he thought. Fear lessened, and the pain started to go away immediately. Mildred applied an ACE bandage to, the, to his ankle for support. The mental atmosphere quickly transformed into relief and gratitude. Now, let's take a closer look at what she did. What was truly important in her work as a Christian science nurse? First of all, understand a Christian science nurse does not diagnose a problem. The nurse works in accord with the Christian science practitioner who is providing specific Christian science treatment as requested by me for our son. Practitioners are individual in terms of how they provide treatment. In other words, they do not follow a formula or outline. In general, Christian science treatment is the application of inspired scientific prayer based on proven spiritual laws of God as found in the Bible and the writings of Mary Baker Eddy. Besides taking care of the practical needs of the patient, the Christian science nurse is praying also, but not specifically for the patient. The nurse is praying for herself or himself to witness the omnipotence and omnipresence of divine love in action, which negates the mesmeric picture of accident, injury, or disease. Our leader Wright writes in her textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures on page 395, the nurse should be cheerful, orderly, punctual, patient, full of faith, receptive to truth and love. As I continue to ponder the circumstances of that afternoon, it becomes clearer that Mildred lived the essence of that sentence because she let her words and actions be a clear transparency of love's care. Barbara Waite, a journalistic Christian science nurse from Ontario, Canada, wrote this in an article published in the Christian Science Sentinel. Christian science nursing is more than just practical care for those in need. It is a spiritual activity that flows from our prayerful consciousness and communion with God. The desire to serve in this way is a natural outcome of understanding more about God and our fellow man. Now, let's take a moment for some self-examination. Think about it. Doesn't everyone have the same God-given capacity to express those nursing qualities which contribute directly to healing? Yes. That means everyone here today. Please do not misunderstand me. I am not making a recruitment speech for everyone to become a trained and certified Christian science nurse. That decision is between God and the divine unfoldment of the individual. My point is, and I quote again from Barbara Waite's article, nursing is natural to each one of us because we are the expression of divine love, the source of all nursing qualities. We can all practice our God-given nursing capacity to help wherever we're needed. People have called me to report 
my family member or my friend has a health problem and wants to have it treated medically. I don't know what to do. Sometimes I will refer the caller to that passage on page 395 in the textbook. We'll point out that it is perfectly all right to pray for yourself, to practice those important nursing qualities around your spouse, your family member, or anyone else. This approach has had encouraging results. And why not? It diminishes fear and worry. It empowers one to feel a sweet sense of God's love. They behold how nursing ourselves through prayer can serve to nurse others. What's it take to do this? Getting to know the nature of God better, which reveals the nature of man better. And this brings healing. How do we do that? Well, start reading and or continue to read, study, and practice the understanding of God found in Mrs. Eddy's textbook. There's a sentence in Science and Health on page 306 that has helped support my God-given nursing capacity when facing emergency situations. It reads, undisturbed Amid the jarring testimony of the material senses, science, still enthroned, is unfolding to mortals the immutable, harmonious, divine principle, is unfolding life and the universe, ever-present and eternal. So, Wyatt's story continues. We were able to borrow an old pair of crutches stored in his grandpa's attic so he could get around at school. Monday morning, I returned to my job as an elementary classroom teacher. Both Wyatt and his sister happened to attend the same school where I taught. My first stop was to check in with my principal. I explained what had happened and emphasized that Wyatt's mom and I were relying on Christian science for the proper care and treatment for our son, and a Christian science nurse for bandaging. He accepted that. I also requested that if he learned uh, that any other staff members had questions about what had happened, then to please refer them directly to me. That afternoon at dismissal time, I was standing by my classroom door as my students left for the day. Then Wyatt appeared. By this time, he was carrying his crutches. He said he didn't, he didn't need them anymore. Moments later, his classroom teacher arrived to talk. We had a good discussion about the experience. By Tuesday, he was able to put both shoes on by himself that afternoon, he had a scheduled baseball practice. He really wanted to go. After dropping him off at the location, I watched him enter the practice area as a ball was hit into the outfield. He instinctively ran full speed after it with dominion. As a grateful parent, I said, thank you, God, for being with him. As I continue to learn about that experience years later, thank you, God, for your supportive nursing care for all of us. So, we touched on nursing ourselves a little bit. Now we need to go into how that phrase connects with nursing our churches. A word about our leader. She wrote the book that was so instrumental in this beautiful healing of our son. She had revised and edited this book for over 30 years until it is now in this final version today. Big things come in little books. As she continued researching her Bible, recording healing ideas, 
the spiritual nature of God was illumined, which led to a better understanding of God's creation, man. And then she practiced those spiritual laws on those dear ones who came to her for comfort and cure. Healing was the result. She then named her Bible-based discovery Christian Science. In the early days of her writing and practice based on her research of the Bible, Mrs. Eddy had hopes that her discovery would naturally be accepted by mainstream Christian churches of her time. That was not to be the case. It was now apparent that she needed to start a church designed to preserve and to protect her textbook, which is paramount to expanding one's understanding and effective practice of Christian science. Had Mrs. Eddy only focused on the discovery of Christian science and writing the textbook, where would the Christian Science Church be today? She needed a way to safeguard the textbook and a process that would ensure the long-term publication of it. There needed to be designated public locations where the textbook would be studied and purchased. There needed to be Sunday schools for the education of the children and church sermons that comfort, heal, and nurse. Her role as discoverer of Christian science was now expanding to include that of founder of a church movement. She wrote another book titled Church Manual of the Mother Church. Robert Peel wrote this in his biography, Mary Baker Eddy, Years of Authority. Her manual of the Mother Church was to play a role in the movement second only to that of science and health. Please indulge me for a moment as I share the biblical account of an exchange that our master Christ Jesus had with a lawyer. It's found, we read in Luke 10. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He, Jesus, said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he, the lawyer, answering, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. I love that Jesus had him answer his own question. It was a self-examination moment for the lawyer. When Jesus asked him what is written in the law, the Amplified Bible Compact states that he was referring to the Old Testament passages from Deuteronomy 6, paragraph 5, and Leviticus 19, paragraph 18. To me, the lawyer's original question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life, was another way of asking, how can I make sense of this life experience? How can I understand God. That's why we have the Bible and science and health to show us individually how to love God with all thy heart, soul, strength, and mind, to nurse ourselves, and why we also have the church manual to show us how to love thy neighbor as thyself to nurse our churches collectively through an organized church structure that is designed to prosper in our local communities, which directly contributes to working out our salvation and validated by Jesus' words, this do and thou shalt live. According to the Amplified Bible Compact, this passage means do this and you will live, enjoy active, blessed, endless life in the kingdom of God.
From the biography, Mary Baker Eddy, Christian Healer by Yvonne Cache Fetweiss and Robert Townsend Warnick. This is written about Mrs. Eddy. In her eyes, the manual was much more than a compilation of rules to operate her church in an orderly manner. She also intended it to be a guidebook that, when understood and obeyed, would make its students better Christian healers. Like science and health, the manual was to be applied to all aspects of one's daily life. I've been a member of five branch churches during my spiritual journey. One thing I have concluded about branch church membership, you do not have to look any further for opportunities to grow in grace, <laughs> to practice patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. A word about dwindling numbers in our branch churches. During recent annual meetings at the Mother Church, we have seen some wonderful, heartfelt examples of branch churches in the field who have triumphed over the claim of dwindling numbers. The recent August Christian Science Journal features a very inspiring account of a branch church revival handled through prayer. Margaret Rogers, a member of the Board of Directors, reminded us two years ago not to be bullied by low numbers when facing the question, how big is your church? She said a better question is, how big is church in each member? I mention this so we can be alert to know that, know the truth that the Christian Science Church is vital to our communities, that this is God's church authorized by the church manual and meeting the needs of our communities here and throughout the world. We need to decisively handle the mesmeric claim that mankind is apathetic, simply not interested in Christian science, in attending church, incapable of loving it, hypnotized by the allure of materialism, mesmerized by the belief that the use of medical procedures and prescriptions is the only answer for effective health care. As we humbly and fervently pray for growth and grace, we are able to detect that mortal mind is at the root of any issue or problem, not a person, place, or thing. We need to understand that mortal mind is a deceiver, a disruptor, a divider. What's the antidote? Start with inspired prayer that acknowledges God's authority, God's allness, and man's oneness with the indivisible God. And being totally confident that the understanding and practice of Christian science heals and unites. It never separates or divides. And then, put into practice what we know. Our practice then as Christian scientists is to know that man in God's likeness is the only real man. He is incapable of being either provoked or provoking. He is incapable of being malicious or maligned. He is also incapable of expressing or knowing jealousy, anger, or self-pity. If these false traits seem to be expressed through ourselves or another, the Christian scientist must reverse them, admitting only divine characteristics in their place, such as unity, right motives, spiritual purpose, trust in God. Mrs. Eddy gives us some very wise instruction to counter animal magnetism in Miscellany 2.13, it reads, Unless one's eyes are open to the modes of mental malpractice, working so subtly that we mistake its suggestions for the impulses of our own thought, the victim will allow himself to drift in the wrong direction without knowing it. 
Be ever on guard against this enemy. Watch your thoughts and see whether they lead you to God and into harmony with his true followers. Guard and strengthen your own citadel more strongly. Thus you will grow wiser and better through every attack of your foe. And the golden rule will not rust for lack of use or be misinterpreted by the adverse influence of animal magnetism. As we know, the church manual lists five expectations for our branch churches. To conduct Sunday church services, hold Sunday school, Wednesday testimony meetings, maintain a public reading room, and sponsor a minimum of one Christian science lecture per year. Mrs. Eddy recognized the great importance of church in human experience. She wrote this in miscellaneous writings. The church, more than any other institution, at present is the cement of society, and it should be the bulwark of civil and religious liberty. When we open the doors to our church services and Sunday schools, are we ready for those who attend? What is attracting them to our services? What is attracting you to the services? Our textbook reads, there is but one real attraction, that of spirit. Are we praying to see our membership united in serving God as we attend and support our services? Sure. Is it possible to see more clearly that not only does mankind need what the church service offers, but also deeply desires it as well? Yes. Can we see that God is bringing those in need to his service and that our job is to be ready for them? Yes. And why? Because millions of unprejudiced minds, simple seekers for truth, weary wanderers athirst in the desert are waiting for rest and drink. Give them a cup of cold water in Christ's name and never fear the consequences. Oh, and don't forget to include yourselves in your heartfelt prayers. We are also worthy of a full measure of the blessing of the service. Miss Ivmi Walter, a deeply devoted worker in the Christian science movement for many years and wrote extensively for our publications. This is from her article, Practical Operative Christian Science. The Mother Church and its branches represent Mrs. Eddy's work as founder. She founded her church upon the rock of truth. Her prayer for her followers was that they might find within it home and heaven. Let us bring out the heaven in our church work. Then we shall find home, an abiding sense of love's gracious outpouring of comfort, security, and rest. Our reading rooms attract the receptive public to access the textbook and other literature and offer a spiritual atmosphere for study and prayer. I once walked into a Christian science reading room simply because I knew there was a quiet place to rest. I had been struggling with a very stiff and sore knee for days and had been praying a lot. No relief. I sat down in a very comfortable chair in the study area simply to listen to God. I didn't hear any words. But in a few seconds, I felt a tingling sensation in the knee, and then the soreness just vanished permanently. Complete freedom of mobility. I was reminded of that account in the book of Acts, where Peter and John found the lame man begging at the gate of the temple. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. There was lots of good nursing going on even way back then. It also made me so grateful for the devoted members who were serving their branch church in the reading room on that memorable day, who were nursing their church by supporting its healing atmosphere. Another opportunity to love thy neighbor as thyself as we practice nursing our branch churches is for members to work together in sponsoring a Christian science lecture we can and should expect to feel divine love's nursing nature every step of this God-directed missionary work. And lastly, Lynn and I started attending church services shortly after moving to Brooklyn. Wednesday testimony meetings are held in the reading room. One evening during the singing of the last hymn, I heard a loud groan from someone sitting behind me. A fellow member directed my attention to a woman slumped back in her folding chair. I got up and sat beside her and managed to get my arm under her head to make her more comfortable. And I held her hand. Linda sat in a chair on the other side of her. The woman was exhibiting labored breathing, rolling eyes, in and out of consciousness. My prayer, Father, show me what to say, what to do, what to know. And above all, let us feel your loving assurance that all is well right now. I sat by her side for a few minutes voicing truths that felt right to speak. I don't remember exactly what I shared with her, but I knew it was in the spirit of that precious sentence found on page 365. The poor suffering heart needs its rightful nutriment, such as peace, patience in tribulation, and a priceless sense of the dear Father's loving kindness. Isn't that nursing in action? In a few minutes, breathing returned to normal. She started to speak coherently, sat up. During this time, most of those in attendance, about 10 of us, members and non-members, remained quietly and prayerfully supportive of a healing atmosphere. After a few more minutes, a church member drove the woman home in the woman's car. The following Sunday, the same woman greeted us with the biggest smile and heartfelt hugs. What a joy to witness healing by the power of the nursing Christ. Thank you, God. Since that experience, she has joined our branch church, has taken class instruction, and then joined the mother church. God brings the sincere seekers for truth to our church, and we are ready to receive them. Ms. Walter wrote in another article, Every church service must heal because it is the voice of truth, the Christ speaking to human consciousness, causing material misconceptions to yield. In closing, can we pray silently for one minute to cherish our God-given capacity for nursing ourselves, nursing our churches? Let's pray. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure.
brethren, fare well. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Till we all come in the unity of the faith And of the knowledge of the Son of God Unto a perfect man Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ So finally, dear brethren, farewell Be perfect, be of good comfort Be of one mind Live in peace and the God of love and peace shall be with you Till we all come in the glory of one another And of the knowledge that we all are one So let the love pour forth to all your brothers and your sisters in the family of God. Now finally, good brethren, farewell. Live in peace. Then we one mind together if we be in peace and the God of peace shall be with you Fare ye well. Not quite yet, but I'd like to thank you all for being a part of this spiritual holy feast with us today. I would just like to publicly recognize our hardworking and wonderful staff of Higher Chas from our building maintenance people and our nursing staff and our administrative staff. Please give them a round of applause. And you will meet our food service team who's pre preparing the food fest that's awaiting you uh, outside. I also would like to remind you that our Christian science nurses, more have come forward actually, um, will be in a receiving line right outside the door so you could say hello to them and greet them because this is a day to honor the hard work of our unsung heroes. And as a parting farewell gift, we have a gift for all of you, which is Addresses to Branch Churches by Julia Michael Johnston. And I would like to publicly recognize and thank the Honorable Judge Grise, who is a part of the Association of the Pupils of Julia Johnston, who gave us permission to reprint this wonderful book that we will also be spreading the message around when we do our continued this message for the year of nursing ourselves, nursing our churches. Thank you so much, Judge Grise, and the association. And so once again, let's all light our lamps and go out there and have a great time. Bye-bye. <laughs>